In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can program a conversation between two sprites within Scratch. This is a really nice activity that can tie into lots of different areas of the primary curriculum. In literacy for example you could use two characters from a book that you've been studying and you could program a conversation between those two characters. In this example though I'm going to show you how we used it as part of a history topic where pupils had been learning about two key characters from their ancient Egypt topic. So within their topic pupils in year three had been learning about Lord Carnarvon and Howard Carter and they'd learnt that Lord Carnarvon was the person that had been financing the search for Tutankhamun's body and Howard Carter as the archaeologist had not been having much luck with this so we talked a lot about the conversation that might have took place when Howard Carter needed to go back to Lord Carnarvon to ask him for more money to keep financing the search. So pupils first of all thought about this and then they planned out the conversation that they would have imagined would have took place between these two uh, characters and to do that we use this really handy resource actually uh, it's from the codeit.co.uk website which is a fantastic uh, website by Phil Bag. it's got lots of really good activities on there for, for using Scratch um, and on this page here he put some links to lots of different conversation algorithm planners uh, we use this one here by uh, Gary Setchell at, at the bottom so I gave each pair of pupils a copy of this sheet and at the top they wrote down the two characters so Lord Carnarvon and Howard Carter and then in the boxes here they wrote down what each sprite was going to say at each part of the conversation now the key point here is that as with a conversation that would take place in real life when one of the character is talking the other person is obviously waiting for their turn to reply so you just need to really stress the importance here of making sure that uh, however long the character is talking for the other character is waiting for that exact same amount of time uh, if pupils don't do this and they don't have all the timings matching up then when they come to programming it they'll find that the speech bubbles are starting to appear on the screen at the same time and it's difficult for, for the person watching it to, to be able to read what's going on. So pupils spent the first lesson uh, just planning all that out on their sheet and then when they'd done that they went into Scratch and they had a go at programming that conversation. So first of all as with any Scratch project if you're not going to be using the cat sprite you'll need to delete that. So pupils started off just by selecting the cat, right clicking on it and pressing delete and obviously the first thing we'll need to do is put in those two characters that are going to be in the conversation so in the example I'm going to show you here we're going to use two images that we save from the from the web uh, you don't have to do that you could choose uh, two built-in sprites if it fits in with with the theme of the conversation um, but just to make it look a bit more realistic pupils spent some time first of all just finding uh, an image of Lord Carnarvon and an image of Howard Carter to use so I've done that and I've saved that to to the computer so to upload a sprite that you've saved to your computer you just need to click on this button here so I'm just going to locate the image of Howard Carter first I'm just going to double click on that to put that image in and then I'm just going to press that button again and just put the image of, of Lord Carnarvon in. Now as you can see here both those images are a bit too big so I can just use the shrink tool here just click on that and then just keep clicking on the image to make it a bit smaller. So once you've got the sprites the right size to just make it look a bit more realistic what I asked the pupils to then do was to go to the costumes tab here at the top and just use the rubber tool here just to rub out all the background. So the easiest way to do this I find is if you just make the, the eraser size fairly small and just go around the outline of the, of the character And then once you've done that, just make the eraser size a little bit wider. And then you start to take out all the other background bits. So 
So obviously you need to do this with both sprites, so then you need to select the next sprite and do the same. So once you've done that with both sprites, you then can you can then import a background image as well. And again, you could use uh, an image that you've already saved from the web. Or there's some nice uh, ones already in the library as well. So I'm just going to click on that and and use one of them. So that one will probably look okay for the purposes of this. So obviously, next thing, just make sure that the sprites are in the position you want them to be. And then once that's all set up, the next job is for the students to start programming their script. So as with any um, project in Scratch, you need to select the sprite that you want to program first. So we'll presume that Howard Carter is the person that's going to say uh, the first thing. So I'm going to select Howard Carter and I'm just going to select the scripts tab at the top. And then I'm going to start to program him to say something. So Again, as with most Scratch projects, it's going to run when the user presses on or clicks on the green flag. So I'm going to go to events and drag in the when green flag clicked instruction. And then underneath that, we're going to put in a say block. So the say blocks are located under looks. And we're going to use the one at the top, which enables you to adjust the amount of seconds. So I'm going to click on that one and join that to it. So this is where pupils will be now referring to their planner and having a look and see what they've they've wrote down on their plan. And you then just need to click inside the text, just take out the default text that's there and put in their text. Now the number of seconds refers to the number of seconds that the speech bubble stays on the screen for. So for this sentence here, which is fairly long, people probably need slightly longer than two seconds in order to read that. So I'm going to change that to five seconds. And again, people should have already planned on their sheet how long the sentence is going to be on for. And again, referring to their sheet, pupils will then need to program their other character to wait for the same amount of time. So I need to go to my other sprite now, which is Lord Carnarvon, and then I need to program him when the green flag is clicked to wait for five seconds, because that's how long Howard Carter is going to be talking for. So the wait block is located under control, and it's right at the top. So I just need to drag that in and then change that to five seconds. Now, again, if we look back at the sheet to refer to, after one character has waited, he then says something, and then the other character waits for the same amount of time. So now I'm going to have Carnarvon saying something. So under looks, I'm going to drag in the say block. I'm going to type in Carnarvon's reply. And again, I think for that sentence, five seconds should be long enough to read it. So now I just need to go back to Howard Carter and program him to wait for five seconds. And then that's basically all there is to it. It's just repeating the same pattern of having a say block followed by a wait block and just making sure that at the same time, the other sprite is doing the opposite thing. And once people have got their head around this, they can just keep referring to their planning sheet and can just keep adding in the correct say and wait blocks. So again, just going back to here, you can see now it's Howard Carter's turn to respond with something.
And then once pupils have filled in all the text that they planned for, they can click on the green flag just to run it. And obviously I encourage pupils to keep doing this as they're doing it, just to check for any bugs. But once it's all finished and programmed, they can put it in full screen and this is what it'll look like.